Hi, everyone. My name is Judy, Product Manager in Google Cloud Networking. And I'm also joined by Jeremy, an engineering lead, as well as Nick from our networking specialist team to take you through a deep dive of cross-site interconnect, a key enabler for Google's Cloud WAN solution. Recently, Google introduced cross-cloud network, providing an open, secure, and performance-optimized network platform. Customers have been using cross-cloud network to enable their distributed applications across clouds seamlessly, deliver global front-end solutions for content delivery at scale, and connecting enterprises and clouds efficiently with the new solution, Google Cloud One. Cloud One is a managed global one offering that meets the needs of mission-critical enterprises. It provides on-demand, any-to-any reliable connectivity over Google's network with a comprehensive cloud-native and partner integrated security solutions, giving customers flexibility and choice. Cloud One improves performance by optimizing network paths to applications, delivering up to 35% lower latency for improved application experience. In addition, it provides integrated security for branch offices, direct connectivity to other clouds, and simpler network configurations, resulting in a significant reduction in total cost of ownership. With Google Cloud WAN, enterprises can unify their WAN footprint over a single network that addresses different connectivity needs. Those range from users accessing public and private applications to enterprises building robust global backbones on high-performance private connections over long-haul routes. In this video, we'll focus on the needs of the high-performance segment and introduce solutions that address them. If you're in networking at a global enterprise or a large financial institution, your company has probably been investing in digital transformation and accelerating its cloud adoption. To accommodate this, you've likely adopted connectivity patterns that aggregate your distributed sites and colocation facilities and build on-ramps to your public cloud environments. Despite leveraging cloud-native constructs for some of your connectivity needs, you still need to maintain and retain a considerable network footprint to interconnect your private data centers and colocation spaces globally. So you're left managing bespoke networks with the increased complexity of having to deal with multiple providers across different geographies. You probably also care about resiliency, so you procure redundant services from different operators, only to learn that they share single points of failure over subsea cables and those take weeks to repair. If you've dealt with static infrastructure, like leased waves, you've probably used to the extended lead times of delivering capacity augments that take months, sometimes years, to fulfill. On top of that, you're stuck with long-term contracts that make you over-provision capacity beyond your needs, making the inevitable trade-off between performance, reliability, and cost. To address these challenges, we're excited to introduce Cross-Site Interconnect, an industry-first, layer two connectivity solution transparently delivered over Google's planet-scale network. Cross-Site Interconnect leverages Google's extensive edge presence in hundreds of interconnect facilities to meet you where you are. You can configure your Cross-Site Interconnect wires at any bandwidth, on demand, regardless of your line rate. You can go from a single gig to hundreds of gigabits per second with a single API call or a click in the user interface. A cross-site interconnect deployment is completely decoupled from your Google Cloud footprint. As a matter of fact, you don't need to have any Google Cloud presence to leverage this service. So you don't need to worry about any IP address overlap or exposing unnecessary information to your provider. And you can rest assured that your traffic will always follow the optimal path over Google's backbone without hairpinning through any cloud regions or transiting unnecessary hops. Cross-Site Interconnect is also SLA-backed, providing reliability guarantees even under failure conditions, planned or unplanned maintenance events. So you can offload the overhead of planning, detecting, and routing around failures, and instead leverage network reliability as a service. With those characteristics, Cross-Site Interconnect addresses top high-performance connectivity challenges, providing the simplicity of dealing with the single global network provider for any connectivity need. 
network reliability, matching that of Google's own applications leveraged by billions of users worldwide. Maximum reach with over 2 million miles of terrestrial and subsea cables, all delivered through the cloud where hundreds of gigabits per second of bandwidth can be scaled up or down with a single API call. All of that without compromising on neither performance nor costs. To dive deeper into what makes cross-site interconnect such a breakthrough in today's performance connectivity landscape, I'll hand it over to Jeremy to share deeper insights. Thanks, Judy. Let's start off by looking behind the curtain at some of the complexity in modern network operations. To meet today's stringent SLOs, networks need to deal gracefully with multiple simultaneous faults. It's not enough to have a backup path. You need a backup path for your backup path, and you need a capacity plan for that without exploding your budget. You also need to detect partial degradation, like a single misbehaving optic in a lag, and mitigate that automatically because humans realistically need 15 minutes to respond and mitigate any issue. If a human has to fix it, you've already blown your SLO. You need end-to-end -end probing everywhere to track SLO and pinpoint when systems aren't working as expected. And you need a team to build all of this and manage it as your needs change and technologies evolve. Google has invested thousands of engineer years and billions of dollars to build a seamlessly reliable global network for our own products. For example, We've built sophisticated models to simulate thousands of realistic concurrent fault scenarios informed by decades of historical experience. This data drives out our, our network build, whether that's more capacity or more diverse paths as necessary to meet our SLOs. Other systems constantly monitor the real-time safety of our network. For example, flagging a maintenance event that was previously safe but which has become riskier under current network conditions. We also have active probes and router telemetry pipelines to detect network degradation, triggering fully automated mitigations where possible, and backed up by a large, well-trained team of network operators who are equipped with advanced AI tooling to quickly synthesize what's happening, the likely causes, and suggested next steps. Weekly audits of network SLO risk trigger broader operational pivots, like accelerating network augments or pausing routine maintenance in some areas, or further investments in operational tooling. Our commitment to reliability is embedded in every layer of the network, from the way that Google builds and deploys its own submarine cables, choosing paths that are more reliable despite being more expensive, to our systems for protecting network tenants when someone else tries to use more than their fair share. All of this translates to a robust network that keeps your customers happy and your pagers quiet. But we don't expect you to just take our word for it. As network operators ourselves, we understand that real-time network performance data is critical to root causing issues and holding network providers accountable. So cross-site interconnect includes built-in probes, which are exported as standard cloud metrics. You can easily create dashboards or alerts for things like loss and latency. And you get all the flexibility that you'd expect from a cloud product. If you need an extra 42 gigs of capacity between Chicago and Sydney, but only for six hours on Fridays, you can do that. Now let's consider a typical hub and spoke enterprise network. With conventional lit wave services, you need to procure redundant routes with path diversity to avoid single points of failure. As we just saw, cross-site interconnect offers a simplified connectivity abstraction managing this complexity for you. But you're still just plugging in an ethernet cable, so the reliable wire abstraction doesn't sacrifice any flexibility. Your existing L2 and L3 protocols and operations continue to work just as they do today, and all this means you can gradually introduce cross-site interconnect into your existing WAN footprint. Now, security is, of course, a top priority for any corporate WAN. Cross-site interconnect offers point-to-point pseudo-wires between your routers, but your connections are isolated and unreachable from your cloud resources. For further security, you can configure MACSEC or your preferred encryption between your routers. Now, Nick, our cloud networking specialist, will walk you through a typical deployment scenario. Thank you, Jeremy. Let's walk through a typical deployment scenario. Your company is turning up a new site in Sydney, Australia, and you need connectivity back to your hub in Tokyo. You only need one gig at first, but you expect to grow that over time over the next six months as the site comes online. You start by deploying a pair of cross-site interconnect ports at the new site in Sydney, and also at the Tokyo hub if you don't already have ports there. While the backbone is automatically protected, redundant ports are necessary to maintain connectivity during edge router maintenance. Cross-site interconnects port mode supports automatic forwarding of port down events to the remote end of the wire, but
but configuring BFD is still a best practice for fast reaction to brownout faults that can occur between your router and ours. Now let's jump into an actual demo in the console. All right, so let's jump into the console. So here we're going to set up a new physical connection and we're going to select the cross-site interconnect connection type. Click continue. Next, it's important to check first your quota to make sure you have enough quota for the cross-site interconnect connection. Now, I've already done that so I can proceed to step two. Here we're going to give the connection name and then we're going to select a co-location facility. So as I just mentioned, we're going to select Sydney and in this case, we're going to select next DC S1 and keep the capacity to 10 gigs. Next, in the order redundant interconnect page, we're going to give it a redundant name. So we're going to get, keep it at the similar name, and then we're going to select next by keeping the same co-location facility. Now in the contact information, this is where I would input my company name, and this is going to be issued out on the LOA. For the technical contact, you can add additional recipients to receive the LOA and the turn up instructions in addition to the project owner. So I'm going to skip that step here since I'm the project owner and I'm the only one that needs to receive that information. Finally, I can review the information and click place order and click submit. Now on this page, we're going to have the order details including the order numbers and then I can go look in my emails for the LOAs that were generated and then proceed with ordering my cross connects. Now once the cross connects have been completed and my ports are up, we can proceed to create a new cross-site network. Now let's click on cross-site network and create a new cross-site network. Here let's give it a name. In this case we can call it CSI Demo Cross-Site Network. Next we're going to create a wire group. So here let's give it a similar name, CSI Demo Wire Group. And now we're going to select VLAN mode since I can carve out specific VLANs for these connections and reuse my ports for additional capacity elsewhere. We're going to select the type redundant and then in the bandwidth and service settings, I will select one gig as I previously mentioned. Next, I'm going to select the interconnect sites on both sides of the connection. Now for site A, I'm going to select my existing Tokyo location. And finally, for site B, I'm going to select the Sydney location I just ordered. Next, we're going to specify the VLANs that I'm going to use. So for the first wire, I'm going to use VLAN 100. And for the second wire, I'm going to use VLAN 200. Next, we can review all the information to make sure everything is correct. And once I'm satisfied with all the settings, I can click Create Network. And then I wait for the cross-site network and wire group to be created. Now that it's created, I can jump into the routers that I've configured on both sides of the connection, and we can see traffic passing through the wires I just created. All right, so as you can see here, I have two routers, one located in Tokyo on the left-hand side and one located in Sydney on the right-hand side. I can look at the interfaces I've configured on both VLAN 100 and 200. And I've also created some loopback interfaces so I can look at the routing table entries for both of these. As you can see, they're both learned over BGP and I've also configured BFD for fast failover. And the primary path is through VLAN 100. So 192.168.1.1 and 1.2 respectively. So now let's initiate a ping between Tokyo and Sydney. All right, so now that the ping's going on, I'm going to fail one of the active interfaces, so VLAN 100 on the remote B side in Sydney. So let's jump into the interface associated with VLAN 100 and shut down the interface. Now here we can see that I have one packet loss while the interface failed over. So let's have a look at the routing table for the loopback interface. 
And we can see now the loopback interface is learned via 2.1, so over the VLAN 200 path. So next, let's reinitiate a ping and recover the interface and bring it back to the primary path. All right, so we can see here that there was no traffic loss during the recovery, and then we can check the routing table for the loopback address, and we can see that it's now learned over the primary path again, 192.168.1.1. So finally, jumping back in the console, let's have a look at the wire group details. So here we can see the wire group properties and various configuration parameters that we've already created before. Now, going back to the monitoring tab, we can observe the traffic that we just sent across both wires. So let's change the visibility to the last 15 minutes to get more granularity. And here we can see details such as sent bytes by wire group endpoints, received bytes by wire group endpoints, the wire endpoint operational status, as well as the round trip time latency between the wires. And that concludes the demo. Thank you, and I'll hand it back over to Judy. Thanks, Nick, for walking us through this impressive demo. If you'd like to streamline your networking builds and leverage Google's network for your own enterprise, we invite you to learn more about cross-cloud network by scanning this QR code for quick access. We'd also love to hear from you, so feel free to drop us a note on cross dash site dash interconnect at google.com and we'd be happy to connect with you to discuss your connectivity needs. Thanks for watching.